Welcome to the Jay Martin Show. My guest today is Bill Frain, the CEO of Liberty Defense. Now, Liberty Defense is a super innovative company in the threat detection technology industry. And you may not like investing in threat detection, surveillance, and security, and I get it. I don't really either, but what I do as a retail investor is pay attention to where money is going, and I wanna be there first. And right now, if you watch the evolution of weaponry, the evolution of security and threat detection has not kept pace, not even close. And so as a consequence, there are stadiums, airports, temples, all kinds of facilities, and now, to be honest, utility infrastructure that are screaming for better threat detection technologies, and I wanna be on the right side of that trade. That's what Bill's trying to build. That's what he's building. He's now got his proprietary hex wave technology in the marketplace at stadiums, airports, and a variety of facilities across the United States. And I'm keen to get an update from Liberty Defense today and find out what they're building. Hope you enjoy this. This is Jay Martin. All right, what's up, guys? Jay Martin here, and I'm joined once again by the CEO of Liberty Defense, Bill Frayne. Bill, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, good to be back with you, Jay. I feel like we have a lot to catch up on because uh, we haven't had Liberty on the show for like six months. I think it's been about that. I know you've been super busy. The world's been super chaotic, lots to talk about. Can we start at the beginning though, because it has been about five, six months since we had you on last. For anybody who's just tuning in to the Liberty Defense story for the first time, Bill, here's the question I want you to answer. Why does Liberty Defense exist? Why, why are you running this company right now? Yeah, well, you know, a couple of things, uh, Jay. You know, first and foremost, you know, our goal is to develop a technology for the protection of the public. So that's why we have our flagship product called the Hexwave. It's a walkthrough screening portal that we're going to be able to detect any type of anomaly threat on the person. So that's metallics and non-metallics. So, you know, it goes, you know, Obviously, guns are a major threat today, you know, in our society, and we see that happening more and more, uh, especially here in the States with some of the incidents that have happened. But, you know, the overall goal for us is that broad range of, of threat protection that we have with the technology. I mean, there's been, you know, just over the last year, two years, you know, close to 38 million, you know, uh, background checks for guns, the people who are acquiring guns. And it's not just your typical guns that you have today, you know, it's ghost guns, it's guns that can't be tracked, it's guns that can be, you know, pulled apart. So, you know, again, our goal from a, you know, is to develop security technology that is effective, not only for metallics, but for non-metallics, really for where anybody is gathering to make it a safe environment. Yeah, that's the angle that I maybe want to focus on today with Liberty because, you know, we all point to, we think about security threats. And I was honestly shocked, as I was saying before I record, at those gun check numbers, how quickly they're increasing. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm up here in quiet old Canada. I assume the opposite was happening, but, but, you know, the trajectory of gun ownership is increasing at a rapid rate. That's not exclusively or even your core focus, though. So I want to talk about like the evolution of weaponry, right? Because gun safety and gun surveillance is is an old business right and it's a necessary one at stadiums schools and airports etc but you know weaponry is evolving really really fast and the technology to detect those threats isn't evolving as fast and so you know we need new innovative security measures in order to keep up right and so walk my audience through that a little bit the evolution of weaponry and what maybe we're dealing with from a threat standpoint today that we weren't 10 years ago yeah, no, that's, that's a great point, Jay. And, and you do have to stay ahead of the technology. And that's one of the key features we have, you know, with our, our Hexwave product. It's really driven by the algorithms and the software and, and the true AI that's integrated in the technology. So we're looking for those different types of threats. So we can tell if, if something is a gun or if it's a plastic explosive or a liquid or a powder. So you know, the evolution, you know, just, you know, guns in and of themselves, right? Not only is the quantity raising significantly for, you know, people acquiring guns, even in, in youth, you know, we're seeing that number raise um, here in the States, but, you know, now they're becoming, you know, uh, plastic guns, right? Made of very little metal, but they're still very effective. So they elude the typical metal detectors that are out there today. You know, I mentioned uh, ghost guns earlier, um, guns that don't have serial numbers and can't be tracked. You know, there's single shot, 
you know, 3D printed guns, right? You know, and, and what we're seeing is, you know, people will use that, that single shot to maybe take down, you know, security personnel and then they get their gun, right? So, um, you know, the, the terrorists and the bad guys, they aren't going to stop. They're going to continue to do things and they're going to continue to be creative. So we have to have that technology and capability to advance and look for the different threats. And, and that's exactly what we're doing. And, you know, you can even see, you know, there's been incidents where, you know, people have walked into hospitals with, you know, suicide vests made of plastic, right, wrapped around them. Again, it would avoid, you know, the typical metal detection, you know, that's out there today. So that's what we have. That's our special sauce. We're able to look for any type of threat that is on the person, you know, and effectively and efficiently as they go through our system. Now, I want to talk about what's different about your tech and why you're able to detect those threats that traditional gun security measures cannot, because when I first had you on the show, it was sort of conceptual, right? You had developed the technology, you were proving it in the lab, right? But today you're in the marketplace, right? You're in, you're in stadiums, you're in temples, right. you're in airports. Right. And so walk my audience through what's different about the HexWave technology, what you guys have built. Yeah, so I think when we last talked, we had the hardware configuration done. That's right. Which is the walkthrough portal. And so what we've done over the last several months leading up to our beta trials is really develop the algorithm. And what we'll do is we'll take all sorts of different threats, you know, as I mentioned, like a powder or a plastic explosive, C4, um, liquids, gels, but we'll also, you know, do the typical things like the knives, the guns, and, you know, we'll place them all over, you know, all over the body, you know, male, female, different body types, sizes. We actually hired actors to come in and do that for us. And we've collected hundreds of thousands of data points, right, for those different threats. And so now we, we develop the algorithm enough to go out into the field. As you mentioned, a very successful trial um, at a large temple on the East Coast of the United States that gets hundreds of thousands of visitors. And it culminated in their Sunday service. First time they've done, you know, actual detection at a service. And uh, the security um, personnel was so impressed that he actually did a little testimonial for us on our website. Mm -hmm. Actually took apart his gun and put it in different places on his body and were able to detect it. So, um, you know, that was very impressive. So that, that just gives you kind of an idea of, you know, we're looking for that shape, that size any type of anomaly that's on the body because we're using radio frequency and we're actually getting a real time 3D video rate image of the person as they're walking through the system. So that's what differentiates us from the rest. And it's a red light, green light. So it's very clear you know, to the security operator. So there's very little training needs to be done, but it'll say the person is a threat you know, on their pocket, in their back. So. You know, that's what we've done over the last six months or so. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, clearly for us, that's that's the advantage that we have. Okay, got it. Yes. And then I also want to touch on, can we talk about the stadium in Baltimore? You yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so stadium. just, yeah. So, yeah, so, we, you know, so we, you know, we had the successful trial at the Temple. And then, you know, next we went to uh, Baltimore Orioles, Camden Yards. Yeah. And, you know, they have about 1,500 employees going through. Uh, each day for the stadium. So uh, we were there, um, you know, and again, for us, the goal of these beta trials is not only to see the operational capability of the system, and you want to have, you want to have the system up 100% of the time, obviously. We're also looking for, you know, the probability of detection, low false alarm rate, throughput capability, and, you know, all those were very successful for us. You know, we were outside, so it was sunny, it was hot, it was windy, it was rainy and the mm -hmm. system performed. And so, you know, now we're, now we're actually at a major airline in the US. Again, you know, they have about 5,000 employees coming through um, that are being screened today by metal detection. They wanted to enhance that capability, again, to look for the different threats that are out there. Yeah, and that's that. I think that's the sort of the turning point for me. You know, when I started to understand what it is that you do, Bill, because you know you can talk about you know um, Camden Yards, right? Uh, great use case for you to have your technology in there. But what I love about it is that they're no stranger to security, right? They've been hosting baseball games for a really long time. They've had security for a really long time, right? But they've recognized 
that their security detection has not evolved with weaponry. Same thing with this airline, right? That's why they're looking, as you said, they're searching for enhanced security measures. Um, and, you know, I want to touch on your TSA award because this is the yeah. equivalent, so as I was saying, is like, of like vendor financing, the TSA, I think has financed you up to a half a million dollars to invest in the R&D at Liberty because they recognize they're not keeping pace with the evolution of weaponry, correct? That's right. And I think, you know, we see the different gaps, right, in security screening. And, you know, that's why TSA invested, you know, in us, you know, nine plus months ago with that $500,000. Really, it was to enhance the detection capability for the aviation workers as they go, you know, from land side to air side, right? And they have access, you know, to, you know, to the planes and the baggage handling system. So, you can see why the airports, the airlines, and TSA want to have that be as secure as possible. So, you know, and again, evolving threats, right? And non-metallic threats that, you know, can do catastrophic damage and have done catastrophic damage. You know, that's what we're doing. You know, that's why we're partnering with TSA. That's why we're doing these beta trials with the airlines and soon to be, you know, major airport in the US will also be at Toronto airport, you know, at the end of the uh, this month in October. So that's right, you're yeah. going to Pearson. I remember that's seeing right. that news. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, so we'll be okay. in Pearson the end of, you know, kind of that end of October, first two weeks of November. And, you know, they, they've been a great, you know, partner with us. They're looking forward to having the technology. We've been working together. They visited us here in, in our Boston office. And so, you know, we're looking forward to uh, having that unit in the field there. Yeah. And what it does is it gives, like, I, I approach it from a retail investor standpoint. What I want to see is the vote of confidence from the industry, which is what, you know, you see when you're getting outreach from stadiums like Camden, organizations like the TSA, right? They're waving the flag saying, we've got a problem here, right? And right. so some, somebody's going to step up and solve that problem, right? Um, right. And, and, you know, just to that point, Jay, you know, we're getting a lot of, you know, incoming requests, you know, from you know, without being specific to names, but, you know, you have distribution centers. They're looking to, you know, screen their employees as they're coming in for threats. No doubt. But then they want to screen them coming out for theft prevention, you know, people stealing things. So yeah. a lot of interest there, um, interest from banks, from, you know, Federal Reserve, you know, wanting, you know, from casinos, um, you know, major universities, corporate 500, you know, as uh, people are coming back to work. So, you know, there's there's a kind of a theme that's been going around. I mentioned it, you know, with regards to mitigating that insider threat. Right? Can no I, one wants to be the next, you know, corporation, company, stadium to have something happen. No doubt. No doubt. I want to I, I don't want to digress too much, but would you expect a trend of increased security being being required at all sorts of infrastructure? I mean, sort of like utility infrastructure. We're seeing, you know, questionable activity at a lot of distribution centers. Um, you know, energy production areas like pipelines, obviously. And I'm expecting over the next five, 10 years to see a massive push towards enhanced security at all sorts of utility and utility infrastructure all across Western nations, probably globally, globally. But you think that's a, a trend that absolutely. And you know, and nuclear power plants. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. I think we're going to start to see that. I think the the whole security paradigm has shifted. Where we're gonna we're gonna start seeing you know technology like the hex wave at places you go every day as well, you know unfortunately in you know shopping malls, supermarkets, um, yeah. like your you know distribution centers, you know power plants, utility, you know I, I think we're gonna start to see you know that capability, and I think you know the last two years with COVID has kind of trained you know the public that you know whether it's screening for temperature you know, or added security layers. I mean, that's what we're going to start to see. Yeah. And and I like that you use the word, unfortunately, because it does frame it, right? And I know that yeah. so many of my viewers, you know, we have a bit of a libertarian bent in us. And I know some are going to think, why would I invest in enhanced security and surveillance? But, you know, I would just say, approach it like an investor. This trend is occurring. Like it or not, companies are going to need to solve it. Money is going to flow that direction. What side of the trade do you want to be on? And right. for me as an investor, I know you're you're in the weeds every day, Bill. I'm I'm an investor looking to generate a return in the market, and that's what you got to focus on. Detach your emotion from the from the idea, right? Like this is occurring; it's going to continue yeah. occurring. 
You can't stop it, it that, is. right? Yeah, it, you know, it, it's very so very much event driven in this security space. I mean, you look at after the you know the underwear bomber, right? That drove the body scanners at the airport. You know, same with the, yeah. the shoe bomber and all these incidents that are happening. You know, today with you know school shootings and you know shootings at, at supermarkets and and malls. You know, that's just it's driving this added need. And it, you know, again, unfortunately, but it's required and it's happening. And yeah. I think we're going to start to see that evolution on a daily basis. Well, that's it. It's happening. Okay. I yeah. want to loop back to like two key points that I want to leave people with today. Number one is the last time I had you on, Hexwave was still relatively conceptual operating in the lab. Now it's in the marketplace and proving results. We touched on, I think it's the largest temple, one of the largest on the East Coast that you're operating in. Uh, we touched on Camden Yards. We touched on the airline and airport, which have requested um, confidentiality. So I respect that you can't share their names, but you're, right. you're in the marketplace in three unique industries, at least. Anything else on, on the marketplace front, um, you know, real world data that you're gathering with the Hexwave technology right now, Bill? Yeah, I mean, so we're, you know, again, we're focused on the performance and we're going to take all that data and the feedback that we get, put it back into the system. We've actually had some specific requests on threats. So again, we can take that back here in the factory and, you know, adapt the software and the algorithm to look for that. So we're enhancing that software capability. And actually, you know, we'll be doing beta through the end of this year. As I mentioned, we'll be in Toronto. We'll be in, um, you know, uh, University of Wisconsin for some testing, uh, working with Virginia Capitol Police. And uh, we're actually going to send the unit uh, overseas to Amsterdam there's a lot of international interest right now from not only airports, but, you know, a lot of different, you know, corporations and places that are looking for added security um, in, you know, in Europe. So we're going to send it over to Amsterdam where we have a partner and those people can then go see that system there. So system's real, it's operational, and uh, we'll enhance the algorithm and we'll take what we've learned and We'll start uh, delivering, you know, units from a commercials perspective in the second quarter of uh, 2023. And Toronto Airport, you know, Pearson Airport in Toronto is a good little segue, actually, for sort of like an ancillary benefit. They need some help right now getting people through security, right? They're making headlines all over the world about backlogs. And, um, you know, that's that's a side benefit, right, of a technology like Hexwave and that it can streamline these processes and get people through doors faster. Yeah. And it's mobile, right? It's on wheels. So, you know, they can go from place to place and that's, you know, that's the attractive part of this as well. If, you know, they want to secure a certain area, right. And have maybe a layered security approach, screen mm -hmm. people, you know, uh, pre-screening, you know, or screen their employees or screen people coming into the terminal itself. So a lot of different opportunities and, you know, they have, you know, they're, they're very forward thinking. Um, at Pearson. So, hmm. you know, again, we're happy to work with them in the different, you know, con ops and, and areas that they'll use the technology. Okay. I love that because yeah, last time I had you on, you said you were going to get the tech in the marketplace. You've since put the tech in the marketplace. Um, yep. We love that, obviously. Anything else you want to share on the TSA front? I shared why I'm excited about it because it's an industry vote of confidence in the tech, in addition to them just waving a flag and saying, we need some help here, right? So they're actively looking to invest in better security R&D. Um, any more significance to that relationship with the TSA that you want to share with my audience? Yeah, so we're just um, just announced the fact that we received uh, 1.75 million from TSA. This is a, a shift away from the hex wave, right? Uh, we've talked about being a multi-technology company, and you know we've been focused on this for the last year, working with TSA. So they just gave us an award to enhance the capability from a detection standpoint, uh, reduce the number of false alarm rate, improve the throughput capability for the body scanners that are at the airports today. So the ones that you, you put your hands up, um, we have a contract to potentially to develop an upgrade kit. Okay. And so we're gonna work on that over the next you know, 18 months. And the opportunity is for us to keep those units in place and we would develop an upgrade kit again to enhance the performance. And, you know, the overall goal is the effectiveness of, you know, processing people through the airport, right? Faster, more effectively, less touch time. Yeah. But again, with the focus on security and, you know, being able to, you know, evolve with the threats that are happening today. Yes, yes, yeah, so okay. It, so it's very exciting. It's just another, you know, 
TSA invested in in the Hexwave and that development. You know, they're now looking to Liberty, you know, to you know enhance the um, body scanners that are at the airport today with these upgrade kits. So, um, you know, we've got a great working relationship with them. You know, they've been over the last twenty plus years, you know, on the forefront of security. So, we're very excited about it. Yeah, so that's an additional 1.75. It was 500,000 into the hex wave. That was about a year ago, right? right. And it's the second award from the TSA for 1.75 million just, just to enhance what they've got, to enhance the body scanners, find out how yes. to make these you know, better, faster, more efficient. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, okay. What kind of news can we look forward to, Bill? If we're watching for headlines from Liberty Defense next six months, uh, what's in the pipeline that we can look forward to? Yeah, so I think we'll we'll add, you know, probably a few more of these beta uh, clients that we have. And you know, what they're doing is they're coming to our office in Wilmington and they're seeing the system operational. They're starting to see the testimonials from these, you know, uh, beta customers that we have. But I think we'll also start to see, you know, some us building up the um, the order book. Right, we're getting a lot of interest, as mentioned, from a lot of different perspective uh, customers. So. I think we'll start to see over the next six months, you know, uh, Liberty receiving those orders with delivery time, as mentioned, you know, starting in the second quarter of 2023. Okay. Okay. Look, Bill, I appreciate you coming back on and getting this back in front of myself and my audience. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no, thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you for watching this interview. Now, three things before I let you go. Number one, I publish a weekly newsletter and I love writing it. I share my biggest takeaways and action items from the conversations that I have on this channel. In addition, my thoughts on current events, economic events, political events, and you can subscribe for free. Just hit the pinned comment right beneath this video or just go to jmartin.club and you can subscribe on the website. I'd love to have you join the team. Number two, ad revenue from this channel is donated to an organization that is super close to my heart called Zero Ceiling. Now, Zero Ceiling's mission is to end youth homelessness. And the way they do this is by giving at-risk urban youth the opportunity to relocate to beautiful wilderness areas and then provide them with supportive housing, career training, and just generally positive influences on their life. I love what they do. Check them out if you're interested. And number three, if you prefer to listen to my content as opposed to watch it, you can find me wherever you listen to your podcast. Just search for The Jay Martin Show. All right, thanks again.